We're in a tropical rainforest, and this forest is just one of the most amazing places in the whole planet. It's full of thousands of species of plants and animals, even in a small area. And yet, all these plants and animals, in some way or another, rely on bats. Bats account for about half of all the mammal species in this forest. Most people that go to a rainforest miss seeing the bats because they're nocturnal and they hide very well. We're going now to see if we can't find a few of these special hiding places for the bats. One of the most frequent places we find bats in the jungle is in big hollow trees. We have one here, not sure just what's inside, we'll have a look. You have to be very careful around these big old hollow trees because sometimes there's more than just bats inside. Several kinds of large poison snakes live here that we want to be sure we're not running into. I'm going to have a look and see what's inside. You've got to be a little careful at first. I think I'm going to try this one. Not sure if I can squeeze in, it's pretty tight. Well, there's a colony of little nectarphine bats, glossophaga bats that pollinate flowers. And up above them are some corolla bats that eat fruit. Mostly just the nectar and fruit eating bats in here. But way up there are some sack wing bats. Those eat insects. So this is a rather interesting home for at least three or four species of bats. And I've now looked carefully, haven't spotted any poison snakes, although there's some very interesting big cockroaches. These roaches don't ever bother humans or enter human habitations. They're just dependent on living in trees that are enriched with bat guano that provides a wide range of food for them. These are quite some roaches. Very few people have ever seen a roach this big. Let's see how to get a hold of him so you can see him. That's it's quite some roach. <laughs> but bats really aren't associated with roaches that much. These just live in the hollow trees because they like to feed on bat droppings and critters that come to eat bat droppings. We'll turn him loose here. Turn him loose further away. <laughs> here. That's here fine. I already, okay. We're going to turn him loose Yes, now. let him go. <laughs> the number of little nectar bats living in this tree right now could pollinate hundreds of flowers every night. There are not even that many here, but they cover a lot of plants during an evening's feeding. Some of these still have their bellies covered with yellow pollen from last night, from the flowers they visited. And right here is a little fruit bat, Corolla perspicillata. One of these little bats can carry up to 60,000 seeds to new locations in a single night's feeding. And if we figure he only does half that many, and that only a tenth of 1% of those actually sprout to become new tree seedlings, this bat could account for 11,000 new seedlings in a single year. This one bat could do that. Okay, let's take a look at our feet. Down here on the floor we can get an idea of what these bats are eating. Some of them are obviously eating rather beautiful beetles. You see all these bright, shiny beetle wings. And then this red splat, that comes from one of the fruit eaters that was eating red fruit. This looks really good up in here. Glad it came in. Just say I'm going to take a look here. Wow, what a hole to get out of. Okay, here comes first try. Whew, boy, 
I'm glad to get out of that place. That was one of the tightest squeezes I've ever been in. I think it's about time we go look for some bats that are more accessible. I'm telling you, I'm not kidding. Another eighth of an inch and I wouldn't have gotten through that hole.